Oh, what's up tribe? Thank you for being here and welcome to my channel. Today's post is titled Go To and as it's a dialogue between Matthias and his higher self, I'll be referring to Matthias as me and his higher self as I am. Me, talking about hypocrisy. One of the things that humans most often hide behind a smile is anger, discomfort, anger. It happens to me that when I feel angry, the last thing I do is show it. I do not consider myself a person with a lot of anger to express, as I am more depressive than irresponsible. However, moments of anger are usually covered, hidden behind a mask. Why do we do that? I am. To not sound like psychopaths. It is a social consensus. One of the keys to living in society is to respect the rules, the laws established for coexistence. If everyone behaved like children who, without analyzing their consequences, express what they feel, at every moment, with tantrums, excitement, tantrums. Imagine what that society would be like. Me, well, like now, but without so much mediocrity. <laughs> I am, haha, <laughs> it's true. However, this happens because people are not educated as individuals but are taught as social agents. Me, I understand. I am. Psychopathy comes from the Greek term disease of the soul, psyche and pathia. The soul is the energy of the body and illness is the arrest or eruption of the flow of that energy. Thus, a psychopath is someone who cannot properly interact with the energy of others, but constantly explodes. The anger, the tantrum, are energetic explosions which need regulation to live in a community. Energy must be in a certain balance so that there is good interconnectivity between individuals. For this reason, laws were created that punish erratic and virulent behavior. The unpredictable, which can damage public order. This gives security to the group, the clan, the pack, the town. Therefore, culture and social education, manners, try to hide those low passions so that they do not burst into chaos or end up harming the generator itself in the form of punishment. Therefore, People hide their low emotions. For this reason, in the Roman Empire, in the Arab Empire, the Chinese Empire, and so many others that were born from these ideologies, their philosophies or religions punished these erratic movements, dividing the body in two, from the plexus down, like the impure zone that had to be denied and upward the pure zone that sought God, erratic. It comes from the word error, which gives rise to the word errant, that is, one who walks aimlessly, without access or destination, and whose Latin word is known as picatos, that is, sin, which comes from the Indo-European pet foot, giving rise to peko, which means to stumble, that is, to walk erratically, without looking where I'm going, and therefore stumble over your feet. In English, sinner, sinner, sin. Its Latin origin comes from son, sonti, which refers to the one who is guilty, that is, the one who gave a blow, the one who is under pain of the law. Me, to err is human. We are sinners. It's the way we learn through trial and error. I am, but culturally the error is punished as a kind of education by force 
for a peaceful and harmonious coexistence. Imagine, put yourself in the 3rd century, around 380, the empires are growing. Rome is so great that it has no choice but to divide its power into east and west. The province stretch from Persia to Portugal, from England to Libya, many provinces, many cultures and languages, many gods. It's difficult to make everyone follow the laws, the Roman rules. The church is the great solution. All the mistakes, thefts, murders, everything that the Roman law used to punish, not give to vast to control such a diverse population. The implementation of Christianity was the only solution. It is God who imposes the law now, not the Caesar. God can see everything beyond Roman law, and God punishes all those who do not fulfill his Ten Commandments. He knows if you're sitting, for he sees everything with his great eye. Thus, everything impure and erratic becomes punishment. The idea of reincarnation is eliminated to make sure that there are no second chances and that it is now or never, it is heaven or hell, the worst prison of all, because there is no way to escape. Me, sure, it's the best system of social order. In a town without education, the fear of one's own desires, I am. Desires are the greatest source of vital energy. Desire, desire is the fire of life that leads us to awaken the will to do, to achieve. The search for social order, instead of educating to guide that fire, devoted all its efforts to extinguish it. But the vital fire, which lies in the genitals, is like the phoenix. When you extinguish it and it turns to ashes, it reignites, resurfacing with greater force. And every time you want to remove it, you only make it stronger. Me, starting a fire. I am, anger. Me, what is anger? I am, era comes from the Indo-European term ice, which means passion. Referring to a rapid and abrupt movement, like the irregular flaming of the fire that gives off sparks, for the ancients, fire was sacred, as it gave light and night, cooked food, and gave heat in winter. It was the divine made matter, something that could not be possessed in the hands, a free spirit capable of giving life or taking it away summarizing everything to dust. For this reason, fire was considered sacred, becoming a synonym. Fire comes from the Greek word pyros, as in pyrotechnics, or arsonists. A sacred fire is a pyre. An uncontrollable fire is a perado, a word that in Spanish refers to someone crazy who has lost his mind, passion, desire, when they become a sacred art in which sexuality and emotions are used as foundations of chemistry and psychology to interact with creation. They are an eternal and sacred fire that ignites the spirit and matter. But if that fire goes out over and over again, trying to control it, it will find a way to escape, like a pressure cooker exploding from the sides in a irrescible fire. That is, it moves abruptly. The word ice gave rise to the Greek word heroes, which precisely refers to that quality of fire to the sacred. Heroes gave rise to the word hierarchy, eros arche, sacred power, and hieroglyph, eros glyphos, sacred engraving.
But if that fire goes out over and over again, trying to control it, it will find a way to escape, like a pressure cooker. Me, you just made anger sacred. You're making us see the light in all the shadows clearly. I am, as it should be, in English, era, anger, comes from the Indo-European ang, ang, meaning compressed, tight, repressed. Anger is the fire that you have suppressed. It is the power that you have hidden or have been forced to hide. Anger is born from the lack of power, that is, from impotence. Men are more prone to anger due to testosterone. The male hormone generates a lot of inner fire focused on a single point and a single objective to reproduce. He needs to satisfy that organic desire and unlike the female who can expand his hormones and his fire in many parts of his body at the same time and contain it inside him for gestation. The male needs to discharge it immediately. It's an organic matter. Thus, the male's fire is sharper and faster, faster, and is consumed much more easily. Therefore, it is more uncontrollable. A man who learns to direct this fire is more prone to enlightenment, as the sexual energy in a man is generated at every moment which sustains the focus on enlightenment. A woman finds enlightenment in the manifestation, in the expansion, in the life of everything that surrounds her, in feeling part of creation. For this reason, the masculine divinity is in the sun and the feminine is in the waters and the earth. Me, so anger is that creative power energy that is not channeled with harmony and love, but repressed. The inability to take one's own power it extinguishes the sacred fire and, and invites it to explode. I am. Think carefully about this example. When you see an injustice in the world, such as hunger in poor countries or corruption, and you find yourself unable to do something because it is out of your reach, you feel powerless because you do not have the power to help to do something different than solve the conflict and before that helplessness you feel anger which triggers sudden reactions anger me the problem then is not anger and it's not synonymous with hate but a synonym and a and product of impotence having lost the power of manifestation decision action sacredness I am the chakra of sexuality, of emotion, of manifestation, the two power centers that lie in your genital and adrenal glands are supported by a bone in the spinal column that you call sacred. Hyron Ostean, or big bone, made the adjectives great and sacred combine so that the translators ended up recognizing the sacredness of the point where vital energy is created. Hyro indifferently means both sacred and great. Me, so the use of this part of the body is fundamental. Anger, then, is the phoenix that tries to free itself from the cage in which morality has locked it. In order for the feathered serpent to rise, it must find smoothness, fluidity, respect, manifestation. We are afraid of our low passions, because for millennia we have been wanted to control from them. We have been forbidden to speak of the lower parts, denigrating them, denying them, disconnecting us from its creative power. For this reason, when you are told that you must let your inferior energy flow, we usually think of debauchery as if nothing mattered. We have been taught that it's bad, and talking about it makes it seem that the only thing we are looking for is lack of control. I am, when the truth is that what is tried is to allow that we just regain our own control. You cannot enclose fire in a box, because it will drown, killing the strength of your spirit. 
but you can take care of and regulate the fire by feeding it with wood, taking care, taking care of it at an altar or bonfire, so that with love, respect, and contemplation, it does not end up burning the house, the forest, and all the towns around it. Me, we must learn to nurture the fire, not give it the freedom to burn the forest, but give it the possibility of being that light that nourishes, illuminates, warms, forges, tools, feeds. I am, so the next time you feel rage and anger, ask yourself, what are you powerless at? Discover the fault, discover where you cannot act and you feel tied hand and foot. And do not appease the anger, do not repress it, or try to hide or eliminate it because it's not spiritual or balanced. But on the contrary, look for the crumbs that will take you to the origin of it, to the pyre, where your lack of power lies. And from there, look for ways to get to work, step by step, carefully, with respect. You will transform anger into creation. Well, the universe was born from a big explosion and the cosmos emerged from that fire, forging life that contemplates the stars with fascination. Me, I wish, because I am a creator. I am fire and life in action.